Praise the Lord. Recently, I was part of a project in Abuja. So we wanted to do a part-time project to test a company, something, a project we were launching. So on the mentor of my call, Pastor Mentor, I said, Princely, I heard you're looking for staff. You guys and your team is looking for staffs and marketers. I have a young guy that would work with you. This guy is very good. I said, no problem. So I started with the team. It was a small company we were setting up to test the project. So I said, let's go with this guy. We went with the guy. And a week we regretted ever hiring that guy. He was lazy. He wasn't doing anything to solve our problem. So we sat down and we said, we really cannot work with this guy. We have to let this guy go. So after a month, we sat down with him. We said, bros, we can't work with you again. He said, crying. Crying. He, was, he said, I'll, I'll change, I'll change. He said, it's not about changing. Because he came towards us as a Christian. And my mentor said, this guy is a firebrand person for God. And he started crying, please don't fire me. But we had to let him go. Why? Because he wasn't adding any value to us. He wasn't adding any value. Praise the Lord. He wasn't adding any value to us. You see, that's the same thing that's going on in the body of Christ today. We're in the church, we're casting out devils. We're casting fighting altars in our father's house. But the problem is we're not growing. If you go to church, you see a constant, a constant face. You see, we've fought with the devils. The devils are dying. They've been dead, but we have this face that we're not passing. You go to church, you see people, they are fire burned for God. But they're just stagnant. The question is, what is happening? Why are we not selling? And it's not that we're not praying, we're dealt with altars. The demons are literally crying out. But there's this constant phase in the way out. We're not going more than that stage, praise the Lord. If you remember in the Bible, when Jesus went to eat the fig tree, the Bible said, the tree blossomed, the leaves were shining. But guess what? He went there and saw no fruit. I picture that to what is happening in the body of Christ now. We have men that are hot for God, on fire, speaking in tongues and casting out devil. But when Jesus gets close to them, no productivity, no value in their kingdom, they're just there. The same thing Jesus went to the thing. The thing was beautiful. He said Jesus would not have cost that thing if the three had fruit. But he went there because the three was beautiful and it was in a season. But he went there to get a fruit and there was no fruit. That's the same thing that is happening in the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So today, I'll be talking about something that I titled Defining and Selling Yourself. I will speak through very fast. Let us speak the word defining. The Oxford Dictionary defined the word define as core explanation of something. Core explanation of something. But do you know what I, I call a man that is defined? Is the man that has answered these three questions in life. The number one question is, where am I from? For you to define, you need to answer these three questions in life. Number one, where am I from? We understood that our body is just a mechanism holding our spirit. We're from a higher authority. That's why you hear most pastors telling you, they tell you we are ambassadors of Christ here on earth. We're representing a bigger figure. So we need to understand where am I from? To function in life and to define your destiny, you need to understand where am I from? The number two question is, who am I? Praise the Lord. The Bible said in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, he said, and God made man in his own image. In his own image, did God made man. Meaning God looked at himself and there was a picture of himself and God made man in his own image. Meaning whatever God could do, we could do it. I'll tell you a story of the faith that I've gone through in my work with God. Meaning whatever God could do, we could do it. If God can function in a certain way, we could function. God made man in the Bible. The man died. Jesus raised the man back. Even after being dead for four days. Meaning, our body is not stopping us from defining and solving a problem. But once we remember who we are in God, we would function well. So the number three question is, what am I doing here? Did God just waste time, number one, to make me, give me a body, and to just make me pass through the space of it? So if you answer that three question, what am I doing here? The question has to be purpose. What am I doing here? What is the thing that, why did God bring me here? Why did God bring, what's the problem that God bring me here to solve? So if we answer those three questions, we'll define ourselves. So now we've understood a man that is being defined. Now let us go to the other phase, selling yourself. Praise the Lord. So now we've understood that a man that needs to sell himself needs to be defined. And he needs to answer those three questions that I just talked about. So let's talk about selling yourself. The dictionary defined the word selling as the ability to exchange something for reward, monetary value, or gift. An exchange of something. Praise the Lord. 
When something needs to be exchanged, either for money, a reward, or value, or gift, that is selling. But see, as a man, we in the body of Christ, we are selling ourselves, right? The aim is for us to sell ourselves. So there are three, four principles of selling yourself. Please, if you can write this down, write it down. Number one principle is when item needs to be sold, we need to consider number one, the value of the item. Praise the Lord. Now, if I should take a Nokia 3310 phone, and I come to you and I say, Daddy, buy this Nokia 3310 phone, will you buy it? No, why? It's not valuable to you. Now you need a phone that you could snap picture with. But the Nokia 3310 phone would not solve a problem for you. You wouldn't buy it. But if I should bring for you a smartphone and give it to you, buy it because it's valuable to you. If I was a speaker and I speak about finance and you are broke and you need someone to talk to you about finance, am I valuable to you? Yes. So the number two thing you need to consider is the time at which you're selling the product. The time. See, we talked about the Nokia 3310. Why is it not valuable? Because the time has passed. If you're in a church and you're hot for God, you could speak in tongues and cast out devil. And then somebody comes to meet you and your brother. I want you to receive Jesus into your life. Will you do it? You've passed that stage. You don't need to be in that realm. Now you need to get the milk of the word, the bone, the, the honey of the word. You need to be psyched for God. You don't need to hear, give your life to God because you've passed that stage. The number three thing, we talked about the value. We talked about the time. Number three is the state of the product. The current state of the product you're selling. If I should bring your phone, that let me use this to your phone as an example. If I should show you this phone and I said, this phone is good to you. I want you to buy this phone. And you look at the phone, the phone is good. It's a latest phone. And it's valuable to you because you will use this phone to snap picture. And the time at which I'm selling it is what you need. But I came to you and, I, and the phone screen has cracked. And you can't touch it. Will you buy the phone? The state at which you're selling the product. If I was a speaker, I could speak to you about money, not money. And I come to meet you. Number one, you need me because you don't have money. So you would listen to me. But if I come and I tell you, stupid man, you need to make money. Look at this board, the how to make money is work hard. The states on which I'm selling my product to you, you can't buy it. Praise the Lord. And the number four thing is the uniqueness of the products you're selling. You see, there's something about Apple. Who know Apple products? They don't care that they're not valuable to you. They just set a price. Our product is $1,000. It's not for everybody. It is unique. There's Samsung's phone that work far better than the Apple products. But they don't care. They're giving you their phone, telling you this phone is $1,000 and we don't care about it. Praise the Lord. We talked about you selling yourself. There are things you need to consider when you're selling yourself after the principle. The two things you need to consider as a man selling his destiny, as a man who has found purpose and selling his life, you need to consider two things. Apart from the principles of selling, no one your relevance. Relevance in your society or the business. If I was a man, if I was a man in the society and I don't cause trouble and people know that this guy is a very good guy, quiet and seeking the Lord. I'm relevant to the society because I don't cause trouble, right? But now for the society to need me more is me to look at myself as a good man and I pick children like myself and start teaching them the, con the, the, the content of our life. That's me being valuable to the society. So for you to excel and sell yourself, you need to be thinking about relevance in your society and the value you're adding. And I put it to you that the value you're adding has to do with the level of information you have. If I should come and meet you and I said, sir, one plus one, you tell me two. Two plus three, you tell me four. And I keep on and ask you ten plus ten, and you don't know it. The level of information you have. I would rather go to someone that knows hundred times hundred. I've not got to that state, but I need to learn it. So the level of information you have sustains your value on it. The level of information. And it's not just that. The level at which you apply the information you've gotten. So let's look at selling yourself as an entrepreneur. As a young man doing business, a few years ago I developed an application called Spread You. And this app was to solve the problem of connecting people. And I met a lot of people. I said, invest in this application I did. Some people here registered on the application. I said, invest in this thing I did. They said, please say this is good, but I don't see this thing selling very far. I don't see this application you did going very far. I met and the application did not work. So the first thing I thought was the problem, which is the stages of being an entrepreneur, was the product at which I developed. I said, okay, let me do a very good product. Or let's say you think about doing a car that flies, walks on water. So now an entrepreneur thinks of, okay, let me do a car that walks on water. 
And after that project failed because he did a very wonderful product, but he knew something was missing. Okay, so then he said the next thing that's missing is the level at which I distribute the product that I did. Okay, I didn't use social media well. So he focused on distribution. Number one, I said he did a very good product. Now he focused on distribution, tries to sell the product, goes to radio, goes to TV, goes to radio, goes to TV to sell, goes to radio, goes to TV to sell this product. And he noticed the product sold for a while and people are not buying the product. So then he crushed the product, starts a new product, make a good product, distribute it well. And the next one is the value. As an entrepreneur, the value, the problem you're solving. If you're to do something that isn't solving any problem for anybody, you're not going to make money. And that's the truth. If you're not valuable to society, if you should do a Facebook today, you will not survive. That's the truth. If you should do a social media app, you will not survive. Because we have giant that Facebook is worth 400 billion dollars. So if you're not solving, if you're not going to match them and beat them, you need to be unique. And apart from being unique, you need to solve a problem. And that's the truth. So now let us look at how do I sell myself. We're just going to go fast and then I drop the mic. Number one, you need to locate your gifts. What does the option mean when you find the word gift or talent? He said it's the inherent ability that God gave you coming into it. The inherent ability. That thing that you could do that I could not do. I call gift advantage. The advantage that you have that I don't have. I remember when we were little, Shego could take the ball and mesmerize a lot of people and dribble. But if I take the ball, I couldn't play the ball that well because that was his gift, that was his advantage. Praise the Lord. So the number two thing you need to get is you need to define your gift, which is purpose. The next thing you need, you need to define your gift, which is purpose. Purpose is the aim of something, but I call purpose a gift that is defined. A gift that is defined. Let's look at Sinat, for example. The gift of Sinat is singing. Sinat could sing and make you all at the presence of her voice. But she knew this is not all about, and she defined her gift. So I want to sing to save people from hell. I want to sing so people will sing in a wheelchair will stand up. That is her get, getting a purpose. It is you taking your gift, pointing your gift somewhere. The gift that God gave you. If I could sing, for example, and I take my and I said, just singing. I need to sing to be able to raise people from hell. So when I sing, people will wheelchair up, be standing up. That's purpose. The next thing you need is skills. Skills are skills that added advantage that are being added to your purpose. It's applied effort over time in solving a problem. So for example, Pastor Paul Enche is a pastor. And we know Pastor Paul Enche is a pastor. But you know he's a doctor and he's an educationist, he's a smart man. He didn't just make all of those things, they're, they're just like flower, praise the Lord. Wait, they're just like flower. You see a peacock, a peacock is very beautiful. But the Lord added those flowers, so when she come out, you will not meet the pastor and say, Pastor, I need an idea about business. And the pastor says, well, you know, with pastor stage in the era, it, it, as a man of God, whatever, you need to get skills that solve your problem. So when you meet the pastor say, I have this business problem. He give you an idea about business and cast the devil holding your business out. So that he knows about business. He knows about other things. So he's praying for you and speaking to you. Our daddy just spoke here. Do you think he's a man that doesn't have skills? Do you think he's a man that just will cast the devil out of you? No. He's a man that will impact your life. So after you've gotten your skills, you need to build a product. So when people think about you, they think about a brand that will sell worldwide. 